that needs to stop. Enough is enough. The Portland Police Union taking a strong stand against city leaders they say enable violent protesters. The laws will be enforced and that people will be arrested and indicted. Tonight, the changes the union is demanding. Plus, taking matters into his own hands. How a Happy Valley homeowner got the upper hand against a would-be burglar and possibly the worst criminal lookout in history. And an abused cat left to die glued to a busy street in Salem. She was meowing, she was shaking, she was just shivering. The kind-hearted stranger who saved her life and gave her a very appropriate new name. KGW News at 6 starts now. First, burglarized three times in a matter of days. A Happy Valley couple fed up turned to home surveillance to catch a bad guy. Good evening, I'm Laurel Porter. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Haggerty. And that surveillance video you mentioned, Laurel, it appears to have paid off. Uh, but you mix in a sleepy getaway driver, that doesn't hurt either. KGW's Mike Benner is live outside the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office with more on this bizarre story, Mike. Yeah, certainly bizarre, Laurel. We are told a 19-year-old young woman was acting as a lookout and actually fell asleep on the job. That allowed the homeowner to roll right up to her house undetected and catch the burglar in the act. This happened to be the third burglary at this house in the last week and a half. Now, we can tell you that after the first burglary, the homeowner, Lisa Devoin, changed the locks at the house. After the second burglary, Devoin decided to install security cameras. It was during the installation of those cameras that Devoin and her boyfriend interrupted the third burglary. Devoin's boyfriend has a concealed carry permit, so they held the suspect at gunpoint until police arrived. Devoin is relieved the suspect is behind bars, but she can't get past what she's lost in the process. Thousands of dollars worth of personal belongings. Traumatized, victimized, uh, violated. Frustrated. Yeah, kind of feel helpless, you know, what are you going to do? Because I don't have any power in the house. I mean, it's vacant, so um, it would send, but willing to fight for what I have left. All right, the suspected burglar is identified as Edward Surf from Oregon City, and it appears he did not act alone. We're told he had a lookout and getaway driver by the name of Gabriela Solis, only 19 years old, as we mentioned. Deputies found her asleep in her car just one block away from the scene. Talk about a wild story. Lisa Devoin and her boyfriend say everyone should have home surveillance cameras. Had they had them originally, Perhaps they never would have had this misfortune in the first place. Back to you. All right, Mike, thanks for the report. Now, it might be a little too early to talk about flu season, but it actually has just barely begun. Already now, Washington is reporting its first flu-related death. The Washington State Health Department announcing this news on Facebook, urging people now to get their flu shots. The department said the victim was a Pierce County man in his 40s, already had chronic health concerns. Last year's flu season, you may remember, was historically bad. 36 states reporting widespread flu activity, including Oregon and Washington. The state has dropped criminal charges against a Marion County judge. Judge Vance Day was accused of allowing a felon to handle a gun. His trial was scheduled to start tomorrow morning. The prosecutor said at the last minute, a key witness decided not to take the stand. And that's why they decided to dismiss the charges. Judge Day had already been suspended from the bench for ethics violations, and he still faces a state bar investigation. He first took criticism for refusing to marry same-sex couples. So we're talking now to the president of Portland's police union. He's saying that he's fed up with these violent rallies in downtown Portland. He sure is, and he blames city politicians for letting them get out of control and even, he says, enabling violent protesters. KGW's Pat Dora spoke with him and has city leaders' reaction. Pat? Well, Laurel, this obviously is a real sensitive spot for the mayor. He put out a tweet late today saying the city will never tolerate violence. But police union president Daryl Turner argues city leaders not only tolerate it, but through their actions, make it possible. Draw that line in sand. Police union president Daryl Turner said if you want to see recent history, where Portland political leaders veered off the rails with protesters, look no further than the Occupy Portland movement. Protesters were allowed to take over city parks for weeks. Then he points to the protests after the election of President Trump, and more recently, the dueling protests of the groups Patriot Prayer and Antifa. The culture of enablement in our political system that has been around for years have brought us to this point. 
um, they do have some impact on how we uh, approach these protests. The union leader said it's no fun being a cop during those moments. They also want to protect themselves too when people are throwing rocks, bottles and such things at them, including bodily fluids uh, and bodily uh, and feces and things like that at police officers. We want to be able to protect ourselves as well as protect those citizens who are protesting peacefully. He's speaking out now 10 days after this video you may have seen men from both Patriot Prayer and Antifa brawling in downtown Portland. No one's been arrested. Well, the rank and file are frustrated because nationally, this has gone national. You've seen Fox News and different news agencies. Nationally, people are saying, what's going on in Portland? Why aren't the Portland police doing this? Why aren't the Portland police doing that? He said police tactics are dictated at least in part by city politics and that when elected leaders allow protesters to complain about police and spark outside investigations, it keeps police from responding in a decisive manner. The uh, overemphasis on de-escalation and disengagement has caused us to not want to do certain things that we would normally do. He said the solution is simple, a unified statement from Portland's political leaders. Make a statement to those who want to commit crimes, those who want to commit acts of violence, those who want to harass people and destroy property during protests, that it will not be tolerated and that the laws will be enforced and that people will be arrested and indicted. We've not seen that yet, but City Commissioner Dan Salzman told me late this afternoon the union president is correct and the city should put out a unified statement that violent protests will not be tolerated and that police will be supported when they respond. All right, Pat, thanks for the report. Meanwhile, new technology at PDX are already getting some results right now. It helped flag a passenger using a fake ID. This man even started running away after the scanning system warned that his driver's license wasn't real. Let's go into KGW's Kyle Iboshi live in the newsroom. It's kind of a, a big moment for this technology. It's the first time Kyle was able to stop someone from boarding a flight. Indeed, Portland is in fact one of 13 airports testing the new scanners. They'll likely be installed at many other airports next year. The technology called Credential Authentication Technology, or CAT, proved effective this weekend. It stopped one man from getting through airport security with a fake ID. The TSA says the man gave airport screeners his driver's license, but when they ran it through the new scanning device, the ID came up as fraudulent and the passenger took off. He still has not been located. Investigators say a search of the man's luggage found fake IDs, credit cards, and equipment to make fraudulent documents. Well, this is the first time in the nation where the CAT technology have actually identified fraudulent ID. In addition to checking for fake ID, the new CAT system can also help verify the identity of the passenger, pull up flight information, and check security records. And it does all of that in a matter of seconds. Back to you. Sounds like it's paying off. Thank you, Kyle. A lot of people are talking about this story only on KGW. Parents in Gaston say their kids were unfairly kicked off the football team after going to a party where other kids were smoking pot. And this one's got talker written all over it. The district confirming to us that several students were suspended for the rest of the season for breaking the athlete's code of conduct at this party. Some of them were caught smoking marijuana around a bonfire. Parents that we talked to, though, say that two of those suspended athletes uh, did not use drugs. Their kids didn't do it. They say the boys ages 13 and 14 were stuck there at this sleepover since it was after midnight and because they can't drive, they couldn't leave. But my son left the activity, which was the pot smoking and immediately left inside the house to go to bed. That's how I'm interpreting it. That's how half the town is interpreting it. So district officials saying now that they can't really speak specifically about this case, but they said it was thoroughly investigated by multiple school officials. The parents do plan to appeal the suspension. And that brings us to our viewer voice poll tonight. We want to get more voices into the mix here. We want to know, was the district right for suspending the kids who didn't smoke? You can vote at KGW.com slash vote or click on the vote now tile on your KGW app. We'll keep the voting open until the end of the newscast and then show you the final results then. All right, it took a lot of prep. About two years of work. Construction, though, on Portland's brand new drinking water reservoir has begun. Today, engineers took our crews behind the scenes, and we're going to take you to tour this project. KGW's environmental reporter, Keely Chalmers, saw how this reservoir is being built to withstand a catastrophe. 
It's a $190 million project like no other to build a new underground drinking water reservoir in Washington Park that will be able to withstand a major Cascadia subduction zone earthquake as well as a landslide. What we're talking about is emergency supply. Crews have spent the last two years digging this 90-foot deep hole for the reservoir. The next step will be to layer it with concrete. We have 30,000 yards of concrete to pour over the next two years. That equates to about 3,000 truckloads of concrete. Here's the challenge. The hillside above the reservoir is actually moving about an eighth of an inch a year. We had to construct a mechanically stabilized earthen wall. It's about 80 feet tall and it essentially holds back this ancient slide uh, from moving during the construction of this tank. And that's not all. Engineers will also be installing this special styrofoam-like material between the new reservoir and the hillside to absorb any movement. We'll continue to move towards the reservoir and squish that material. It will take crews about another five years to complete construction on this underground reservoir. At that time, what you see here is going to look a whole lot different. This huge hole will be covered. And after that, this area will be transformed into a park open to the public, full of walking paths, promenades, even reflecting pools. This rendering shows what it will look like. A scenic park for all visitors to enjoy, many of them perhaps not even knowing the critical water supply that lies beneath. It serves a number of hospital facilities. It serves the downtown core area, a number of schools, uh, and is, like I said, the, the major terminal storage facility that's available to the west side and the residents on the west side. Coming up later, a young Washington athlete killed in cold blood while on the phone with her mom. So, uh, this isn't right. Her ex-boyfriend apparently pulled the trigger. The dark secret she learned about him just weeks before he killed her. And next, Sticky the Kitty getting a second chance using up one of those nine lives. The horrible abuse she escaped from thanks to the kind-hearted stranger in Salem and how this kitten earned her nickname. And the weather has clearly changed. Some light showers now, heavier rain on Thursday. The weekend, though, there's promise for more dry weather then, but we've got to get through some showers tonight. We'll let you know how much will fall and, again, what the weekend looks like.